Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I really didn't think I would be filming this video. I thought the last time I filmed a University of Greenwich video that was going to be it. It had all the information, all the other questions were answered in that video and I just thought like there's nothing else I could possibly say about the University of Greenwich. It was kind of all wrapped up nicely but apparently I was wrong. <laughs> I have had so many DMs recently. I'm not sure if it's because September's coming around soon or people are starting to think about going back to university but I've had so many DMs so many questions and I found that whilst I was replying to these questions trying to help people out trying to find answers trying to link them the right videos to watch and things that it was actually kind of hard to find like all the information in one piece or like I was even getting confused at what video what information was in so I kind of wanted to create a kind of one-stop shop for everything about University of Greenwich you could ever want or need to know so I'm imagining this video is going to be very long, I have no idea how long I'm going to be talking for and I've had a very large coffee beforehand but I really wanted to make like a comprehensive guide, literally A to Z of everything about the University of Greenwich and when I say literally A to Z I mean I've written out the alphabet and I've come up with a topic for each letter to cover a different part about the university so hopefully I'll have all of the timestamps linked down below and if there is just one particular thing you want to know like accommodation or the building or anything like that check down below click that timestamp and it will take you straight to there and I thought this way it would be a really great way for future potential students to look at as well as people who are already in the university and just need to like check something or aren't sure of something or don't know how to do something hopefully it will be in this video but that does mean I'm going to talk a lot about each subject so I do think this is going to be a long video but hopefully it will be very informative, very useful and mean that no one's confused anymore and everyone can just watch this video, find what they need and we're good to go. Speaking of which, where is my phone? Oh no! I think it's in the bathroom. Oh! <gasps> it's right behind me. I will say I have cheated on three letters because the alphabet is hard, okay? There's a lot of letters and it's quite difficult to find a word that will fit in each but I've cheated on three slightly but I think this, I think they'll still be super useful. Okay so first letter A we're talking all about accommodation which I think is a good one because I think it's actually my most asked question or at least it has been recently. In terms of accommodation I lived at the Macmillan Student Village which is about a 10 to 15 minute walk I want to say from the university it was the cheapest option at the time you would live with six people there'll be six of you in the flat and you could either choose people you wanted to live with or just have it random if you didn't know who you were living with you had a shared kitchen area and your own bathroom and your own room um, and that was pretty much it they did have like a common room in the building but that's building is shared with the music college that's also on the same campus so there were different students from different universities there but it was a really great accommodation it kind of had all the basics that you needed like a desk a chair there was a mini fridge in your room um but i would say it was like the bare necessities so if you want something a bit more glam or modern or anything like that that probably won't be the accommodation for you but if you are on a budget it's very budget friendly I also really like the Daniel Defoe living accommodation, um, a lot more modern, very nice, had a gym, really like up to date, <laughs> sorry, up to date like facilities and things and I had a few friends that lived in there and really really loved it. I would say it's probably like a 10 minute walk to the university and there are a couple of other accommodations on for the Gre Greenwich campus, I think oh my gosh I was going to say the name and now I've forgotten. There's one that's literally like five minute walk like super close to the campus, I can't remember the name of it, I'll put it here, but that one is okay. I went in it, wasn't a huge fan, Daniel Defoe was definitely like top of the line but also very high budget, Macmillan probably bottom of the line but a lot more saver friendly shall we say. In terms of accommodation at Avery Hill and Medway, not a clue, never been there, can't really give any advice on it. I will say that some of these topics that I'm touching on my answer is literally just going to be I don't know because some people, as much as I love answering people's questions and I want to help people out, some people see me as like the ambassador for the University of Greenwich and that I know everything about the whole university across the whole of the UK or whatever and that's really just not the case so anything I have experience of or anything like that I'm more than happy to share advice on and give tips or share my experience but things I don't know I don't want to lie to you like I generally just don't know. 
and if you want to rent privately it is obviously going to be more expensive than accommodation at uni just because you have bills on top of that and everything else it can get quite expensive with like council tax and stuff um, but there are some really great renting websites if you want to look into that and you can either rent like a studio flat if you wanted to or live with like other students or other people that work in London. My favourite renting website to be honest is Rightmove just because I really like the format of it but there's also like Zoopla I think there's one called Student Room or Student Something which is also pretty good um, but Rightmove is always my go-to. So the next topic I'm going to talk about is the building. I've mentioned this quite a few times in previous videos but it is an old building, it's a heritage site, it's super super old, designed by Sir Christopher Wren. It's a freaking stunning building but it does mean that some of the facilities are a bit dated just because it's a protected heritage site that is a grade 2 listed building so they can't like paint whatever walls they want or install like top-notch air conditioning or what have you so it's pretty basic in the sense like you just have like carpets tables desks chairs um and like a projector or an interactive whiteboard kind of situation or in a lecture theatre you will obviously have like the lecture seats going up towards the back and maybe like a microphone and speakers if you need to hear the lecturer but that's pretty much it there's not a lot go else going on there's a little like cafe cafeteria bit they have just built a new building for like a student hub with the student union in it and there's a starbucks in there but the building itself is pretty old they do however have a library with a lot more newer facilities in it so they've got like macbooks laptops that you can rent there's like chill out areas i think there's also a starbucks in there as well um and there's like little hubs and rooms and things that you can book out to do group study work or project work and each floor of the library is a different kind of study grade if you will so kind of the ground floor is group work chatty um then it goes into like quiet floors and then silent floors so they have something for everyone some floors you can eat on some floors you can't so just everyone gets kind of their desired studying environment i guess which is pretty good my next topic is the cost of living now this is a huge question i get from international students quite a lot of the time just because it's quite hard to fathom how much or how expensive London is, which let me tell you, it's pretty expensive. So in terms of rent, you would need to check if you were living in accommodation, how much that rent would be. When I joined the university, I lived there like four, maybe nearly five years ago. So the prices are definitely going to have gone up by then. But I will pop in a little picture of the prices that are currently going on right now. Um, but London rent is obviously going to be more expensive than that. So it's really hard to gauge London rent because some of them are like pretty decent and some of them are just crazy prices but I would say if you're hoping to rent somewhere in Greenwich you're looking at anywhere from like 700 plus depending how and how big your flat is per person I would say so for me in second year I rented with another person so we had a two bedroom semi-detached house with a garden and it was £660 a month per person um, but inflation keeps going up that's why we moved out because it was going to get more expensive so god knows what that is now but that's kind of what we were paying at the time so I imagine by now it's probably like 700 and something per person so yeah pretty expensive that's just for rent that doesn't include council tax doesn't include bills for water heat gas any of that so it's all something to bear in mind but London rent is very expensive in terms of London living costs I would really encourage you to check out my what I spend in a week or what I spend in a month videos because I really go into more detail about it but I would say that most people on average would probably spend anywhere from like 1200 to like 2000 pounds a month depending on obviously how much your rent is how much you're going out what how much you're spending on food um, and all of those good things but London can get very expensive obviously that's reflected in student loans and everything like that but just something to bear in mind I know first year of uni I was on a very tight budget I would spend 11 pounds a week on food I would spend I think my my rent was like 450 pound a month or something for student accommodation or somewhere around there and I would spend like £25 a week or every other week to travel home and back and that was pretty much all I was spending. I had a very tight budget. I was not going out, I was not partying, I was just not buying any clothes. So yeah, I was pretty pretty tight on that budget but obviously it meant I was spending like under £1,000 which was great. But it's very easy to spend more than that. So the next question I get all the time is people asking me whether they should go to this university or this university. Which I find really hard to answer honestly just because... I've only ever been to the University of Greenwich, it's all I can really give advice on or give my experience on. Um, so when people say like, oh, should I go to the University of Coventry or the University of Greenwich? 
my instinct is to say the University of Greenwich because I'm biased and I haven't been anywhere else. So if you're sat there thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know how to decide between two, three, four, five unis, what have you, I would really encourage you to sit down and write a list of must-haves, like you would if you were going to buy a house or something. University is a big decision, it's going to affect a lot of the rest of your life, let's face it. The people you meet, the course you're studying, the job opportunities you're going to get from that. So write a list of must-haves. So for example, my must-haves would be good career opportunities afterwards, um, high ranking for the university, good community feel because that's really important to me, um, and perhaps like a good social programming because I hate being by myself and it was really important for me to make friends at uni. So they would be like my top four or something, just like for an example. And then if I had was choosing between two universities and one matched that better than the other, or I thought I really liked this university but actually they only met one of my four criteria, I would cut it out. I think take that as a sign. You know what's important to you, you know what you want to prioritise and your university needs to fit you and suit you and if it's not matching your top four things, cut it out. People also ask me a lot about entry requirements and this is another case where I genuinely just don't know. Each course has different entry requirements. My entry requirements at the time were ABB to study events management, um, which I luckily got after remarking. I originally got ABC and I think that equated to 240 UCAS points. But since then the whole grading system has changed. I think you don't get ABB anymore. You get like numbers instead of letters as grades. So makes me sound really old but I'm like I'm so far from A levels and everything like that I wouldn't be able to tell you so I would definitely look up your exact course that you're hoping to study and look at the entry requirements on that page it should be like one of the top things super easy to find um, so you know what you're aiming for. My next topic is friends, making friends and all of that good stuff. I have actually got a whole video dedicated to this but again it's just a super common question that I get. I would personally say that everyone I met was super friendly and kind of I don't know, just everyone's in the same boat at uni, everyone wants to make friends, so everyone was super approachable, super friendly and very inclusive. I get a lot of questions from international students asking about racism and things, and obviously I can't really speak on that. Obviously I'm a white British student, so I'm probably the worst person to ask about that, but I personally have never witnessed any racism at the University of Greenwich, but that's not to say that there isn't any there. It's London. London can be quite a place for conflict and that kind of thing so I would kind of bear it in mind but obviously being there for four years I never noticed anything, never saw anything, never thought anything was out of line. From what I gathered from my experience everyone was just super lovely, super friendly, really wanted to get on with each other. I will say at the start you make very fast friends because everyone wants to make friends, no one wants to be alone, everyone wants to have like a group that they can hang out with after lectures and stuff but those friends won't necessarily always last throughout your whole university time. You may find that you kind of, um, what's the word, like grow apart, like nothing happens, no drama, but you just different people, different personalities, different timetables, what have you, but you will end up with a few friends who will last you a lifetime. Now, Greenwich as a place. I could talk about this for hours because I freaking love Greenwich. I lived there for four years and it's always going to hold a special place in my heart. It was the first place I moved out of home, it was the first place that I lived with my boyfriend, um, and it was the first time that I lived in a house like by myself in London. In Greenwich and it was definitely a big factor that pulled me towards the university pulled me towards the University of Greenwich just because it did have that community feel that I talked about before they have really cute cafes boutique shops pubs restaurants um, and it is definitely smaller so it felt like a good step up on my way to kind of central London. If you don't know I originally grew up in Bournemouth which is a little seaside town so it was quite nice that Greenwich still had like Greenwich Park and these big gorgeous open green spaces and things um, so it didn't feel as kind of claustrophobic as London can I guess so it was definitely a nice step up, nice ease into London but still super close you can get there by bus, train, tube, ferry or like riverboat if you want to get into central London and it can take as little as 20 minutes to get into central so super convenient and also gave you the kind of community homey feel that people from a smaller town tend to quite like. Now for H I've gone with higher education and by this I mean like masters courses and PhDs and all of that. I get so many questions about doing a masters and doing all of these kind of very fancy qualifications 
and I honestly have no advice for you because I did a BA bachelor's and called it a day. That's as far as I got. Um, so really impressive that you're going for it. I would definitely encourage you to do it if it's something you want to do. I feel like having qualifications is always a good thing, but I can't necessarily give you any advice or tips about doing a master's course. In terms of internships, the university does offer internships in the sense that I took a sandwich year out, so I did first year, second year, then an internship year, then went into third year and I did find the internship by myself. The university will offer you some support and help and guidance in finding your internship but you are pretty much left on your own to kind of get that sorted and get it locked down and get that interview and get that internship. Your internships can be paid or unpaid. I would really recommend you try and get a paid one just because, like I said, cost of living in London is very expensive. Um, I managed to get an internship for £18,000 for the year um, but some are higher, some are lower, just see what you can negotiate with your potential employer. And I would definitely recommend it if you have the option of doing an internship, if it's an optional sandwich year, I would definitely take advantage of it. It was so, so beneficial. It helped me gain so many contacts and helped me like learn so much about the industry I was interested in and gave me a lot to talk about during third year when I came back to studying. So I would definitely recommend it. The next question I get is about job opportunities and this usually is related to events management which is obviously what I study at the University of Greenwich um, but London has loads of jobs in general, it's a very big place, there's a lot going on, there's a lot of different companies and businesses whether they're large headquarters or like small startups there's usually jobs going all over the place even if it's at restaurants or cafes and things there's so many of those so there always tends to be a job going no matter what industry you're looking for obviously coronavirus hasn't helped with that the events management world has slowed down a hell of a lot and right now i am personally struggling to find an event management role after graduating just because all of the kind of positions and roles I guess for new events managers have been postponed for now but events do happen all year round it's not necessarily a seasonal job you'll have summer events you'll have Christmas events you'll have Easter events and kind of awards dinners and birthdays and stuff like that that happen all throughout the year and it is a job opportunity for both genders there's not really like a gender discrimination within London in the events management world um, most event managers in London are female but the top dogs of these event businesses tend to be men which is kind of interesting but it is mainly women who work in the events industry compared to men but the men tend to be in higher positions take from that what you will i also get asked about pay for event managers within these job opportunities and they really do vary depending on what sector you're going into what like genre of events you're doing or what type of events you're doing i guess so it can range from anywhere from like twenty thousand pound a year to like 50 plus thousand pounds a year depending on your skills qualifications and experience now this is one of the letters where i cheated k is a very hard letter so i've gone with knowledge but what i mean by this is using your degree in other countries i personally have no idea whether an english degree is worth anything in india or in canada or in malaysia or in russia i have no idea that is definitely something you would need to google or just ask a potential employer about um, I honestly believe any degree is a good degree but that may not be the case in other kind of government systems and everything like that so definitely check with the country that you're hoping to use your degree in. Then we're going to be talking about lectures now obviously each lecture will vary depending on what you're studying but I had eight hours of lectures a week I think I had four hours a week in a lecture theatre where you're sat obviously in your lecture rows there's a lecturer at the front talking you through the lecture and there's usually it's usually available online you can look at it beforehand sometimes and take notes so that you're ready and prepared for the lecture or you can look at the slides afterwards if you kind of miss something or you want to check up on something they're all available online so you can refer back to them at any time which is really handy i used to write all my notes on my laptop just because i could literally like copy and paste some bits directly from the lecture slides and add to it as the lecturer was talking which just worked out the best for me but obviously take from that what you will, study in your own way, write your lecture notes in your own way, I know there's lots of different ways people like to do it, but I will say the lectures are quite information heavy and they are usually a lecturer stood at the front talking information at the students, there is an occasional like question back and forth or they'll ask a question to the audience and I would really encourage you to answer, I think it's the most awkward thing when no one puts their hand up, so even if you don't know the answer I would suggest you answer and the lecturers are really good at being like um, oh that's a really interesting thought but have you thought about it this way and like supplying you with the right answer without saying like 
you're wrong. Which is really nice because it gives you kind of the confidence to keep asking questions, to keep thinking in different ways and that's really what they're trying to train you to do is to think about things in different ways and question things and not just take it at face value. So I think they are really good at that and I've always really enjoyed the lectures. There are some that seem a bit pointless or a bit like common sense in some cases but the topics vary, the like content of the lectures vary and you will obviously have lectures that you prefer and things like that or the ways of teachings that you prefer um, but yeah that's pretty much all I can say about the lectures. I've also kind of combined this letter as well but um, we're talking about Medway campus as well as the Avery Hill campus I get so many questions about both of these they must be pretty popular I went to the Greenwich campus I went to Avery Hill campus for an exam so I was there for like an hour I have no experience of it whatsoever or the Medway campus I know the Avery Hill campus is you can get to by bus to from Greenwich and it's about half an hour or 20 minutes or something like that to get there by bus Medway campus is about an hour and a half on public transport to get into London so it's a lot further away um, but yeah that's pretty much all I know about those campuses 4.0 we're talking about other courses like I said some people tend to view me as like an ambassador for the University of Greenwich which is so flattering and I'm so happy that you want my advice and you want asking from help from me that's just like so flattering and I'm so humbled by that but I have no experience of other courses other than events management. I get a lot of people asking me like what about engineering and mathematics and chemistry and physiotherapy and all these things and I honestly do not have a clue, not even the faintest clue. I can direct you to the University of Greenwich website but that's about as far as my research into other courses goes so I definitely try and find someone either on Instagram or Twitter or through the alumni or what have you that has done a similar course or perhaps someone that just talks about a course at another university in general because I feel like the courses will be more similar across different universities than other courses but the same university. I don't know if that made any sense but basically I don't know anything apart from events management. Then we're talking about payments, which is your student loan. Now, if you're a national student, I'm not sure how international student payments work, but if you're a national student, you will get your student loan paid in full parts. It's worked out from your household income. So if you have a very high household, household income, it's likely your student loan is going to be on the lower end of the spectrum. Whereas if you have a very low household income, it will be much higher. So I had friends that would have student loans of like, 10,000, 11,000 pounds and I think my student loan worked out to about five and a half thousand pounds so it's a big difference and I know some people had even less than that or like no student loan whatsoever um, but you can apply for more if you feel like your student loan isn't big enough which I had to do in second year um, because my student loan was going to be like five thousand pounds which my rent at the time was 600 pound a month let's say 500 pound, five thousand pounds for the year which wasn't going to cover my rent basically, let alone food, bills and all of that good stuff. So I did apply for slightly more. Um, obviously you are going to have to pay that back at some point, but that's given to you in four instalments. So one instalment at the start of each term. So there's usually one at like September time, one January time, one at April time, and then one like June or July, somewhere around there. Um, so yeah, they get you your full amount just over the course of the year within those four terms. The next question I get asked a lot about is the university's reputation and ranking. I honestly don't know it off the top of my head. It changes every year. Obviously it gets updated when the university is reviewed against other universities in the UK. At the time I went to the University of Greenwich, so when I was looking around four years ago, it was a pretty damn good university and it was number one for events management in London, which really drew me to attend there. I would say that the university amongst employees and employers and different professionals within London has always been good. I've never had someone like turn their nose up at me or think badly of me because I went to the University of Greenwich. People genuinely just comment on how lovely Greenwich is or if they've been there before and how stunning the university is. Um, so I would never say it was a bad thing to have attended the University of Greenwich but obviously rankings will vary dependent on what course you're doing so I would not just take the university at kind of country level of its ranking but also look at it for your specific course as well. My SD card just died but we're back, we're nearly there guys. In terms of S we're talking about scholarships and bursaries which if you know anything about me you know I talk about that a lot on my channel. I would definitely encourage you to check out the scholarships and bursaries, I'll link the website where you can find those down below. There aren't tons but there are a few and enough to kind of get people by and those people that need it can get some free money which is great. 
I qualified for one of the bursaries which was amazing and meant that I got some free money which really helped with the cost of living and obviously they're not going to promote it too much because they don't want people knowing that you can get free money but you can and I'm here to talk about it so definitely go check it out see if there's a scholarship that fits you that suits your requirements see if there's a bursary which you can qualify for definitely check it out see what you can get and definitely like email the university if you're unsure and just get some more advice about it now tea I've done teachers but what I mean by this obviously is the lecturers and they are so blooming lovely I could not rave about the lecturers enough I've never met a lecturer that I didn't like some of them are slightly duller shall I say than other people but still genuinely lovely people and just want you to do really well and want the best for you obviously it looks good for them if you get good grades as well as the university if you get good grades so they are always there to kind of help you out answer your questions and try and get you to those high grades I will say though it's kind of been my mantra on this channel is you get what you're given no you 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 get what you give I don't know how to word this they give you what you give them is probably the best way to phrase it in the sense like the energy the commitment the time that you give your lecturers and your lectures the lecturer will reward you by giving you the same so if you're punctual if you're responsive to questions if you try really hard in lectures if you hand in all your essays on time and you have a question the lecturer is more than happy to answer that for you it's going to be there to support you if you never show up to lectures if you're I don't know just have a bad attitude towards university and the day before a deadline you're asking questions the lecturer is not going to be super keen to help you out you know you they give you what you give them it's kind of give and take situation you know I have no idea if that makes sense but just try hard at uni and they'll give you all the attention and support you need <laughs> now we're moving on to UK universities so I mentioned this before when deciding which university to go to I've only ever gone to the University of Greenwich I can't give any opinions or advice about other universities across the UK Every university is very different in terms of its operations, its teachings, its lectures, its grades and entry requirements and everything like that. So I have no clue. So if you have questions about the University of Greenwich, I can answer those. Any other universities, unfortunately I am not the right person to be asking. Kind of a similar response to the next one, but it's visas. I get a lot of questions from international students about tier 2 sponsorship and working visas and student visas and all of these things. I am a national student, I was born here, I have no idea about visas or any of that, I really can't help you gain those or get a better understanding of those because I have zero understanding of those unfortunately. Working whilst studying, a lot of questions about this one, I've actually done a whole video about this as well but I would definitely recommend it, it's completely possible depending on your timetable. I used to have 8 hours of lectures a week and I would do approximately like 20 hours of work a week um, which tend to work out quite well and I would obviously take less hours when I had a big deadline or exams to study for or things like that so kind of just work out what works best for you and get like the study work balance like have a bit of trial and error time see if you could take on more hours or if you need less hours to be able to keep your grades up with your studying but yeah I would definitely recommend it and I think the average salary for someone in London or like a student on part-time work is around like eight or nine pounds an hour. Now X, this is where I slightly cheat it because what words begin with an X? I've gone for extracurricular activities, <laughs> don't know if that really works but in this I'm talking about all the other things you can do at the university so there's a student union which often has like different nights on and has bar and things like that and also good discounted student rates so that's a really fun place to hang out is that recently been redone and remodeled so it's really cool very funky down there definitely go check it out if you're going to have a look around the university there's also societies which I would really recommend joining if you're looking to meet new people or get involved with a hobby or anything like that I was part of the event society but there's like a Disney society there's a pole dancing society there's like a netball society there's usually ones for like a lot of sports as well as like other hobbies and I think there are ones where you can literally just like drink and have a chat I think there's like a wine and cheese society maybe I might have made that up maybe that's at another university but they pretty much have a society for everything and if they have one or if they don't have one that you really want if you get 10 people to sign up you can make your own society they also have a mentor scheme which I would really recommend testing out you get paired with someone from your industry and they basically just chat to you and help you out with what to focus on what things will help you put you in contact with other people to build your network it's a really really super handy thing to have under your belt and they also sorry Christians in the kitchen they also um, try and promote an employability passport which is basically you have to tick off 
a certain amount of things to be able to get, gain your employability passport so it encourages you to take part in extracurricular activities at the university like um, different workshops and studying sessions and employability meetings and stuff like that. We're on to why and we're talking about your experience aka my experience which I had a really great experience I could talk about this all day long but I freaking loved the University of Greenwich there were obviously some lectures that I preferred to others some courses that I preferred to others and some courses which I just found a little bit of a waste of time but I definitely feel like I got my money's worth I gained my value from it I got my degree which I'm really happy about and my overall experience of Greenwich itself was just freaking fabulous so could not recommend the university enough I will be singing about it till the day I die freaking loved it would definitely recommend it oh my gosh we've got to Z. this is another one where I cheated I put zoom calls and what I mean by this is like covid obviously and coronavirus I'm getting a lot of questions about the intake going on at the University of Greenwich whether the University of Greenwich is still going to be open for September 2020 and all of these things honestly I have no idea the state of our country right now is changing constantly different rules are getting implemented or taken away or put back on or restrictions and things like that so it is a very confusing time but I would definitely just recommend to check out the university website and their social medias because they are posting like pretty regular updates as soon as they know they inform everyone else so definitely check those out just keep an eye on what's going on but I personally couldn't tell you what it's going to be like in September or January I'm not sure if anyone can but we're trying to do our best we're trying to trying to get back to normal as quick as possible so definitely check out the websites to keep informed but yeah we did it we got to A to Z I think I did that faster than I thought I would but I realised I did speak very quickly so hopefully you got some <laughs> valuable information from some of that at least but yeah if you did like this video please hit thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe down below and if there is any extra information that I have shared with you or that you've learnt from another source or that you know as a University of Greenwich student yourself please leave it down below because it would be so so great to have this as kind of like a one-stop shop for all of the information you could ever need about the University of Greenwich. I'm sure I will be adding some notes to the description box down below with the timestamps and if there's any videos or anything like that I can link to give you like more information about a specific subject that I touched on throughout the A to Z guide I will definitely link that down below for you as well. So hopefully this is a great starting point to do some research into the university to learn a bit more about it and hopefully convince you to go because it's great. But yeah hopefully you have really enjoyed this video and hopefully I will see you very soon.